So good evening, everybody. And thank you for braving the weather tonight and joining us here at the New York Public Library. Uh, this program is part of the library's LGBT initiative, uh, which was started about two years ago and is a combination both of uh, programming, uh, collection support, and fundraising to highlight the library's LGBT histor historical collections. Uh, many people don't know that the New York Public Library is one of the greatest archives of the history of LGBT civil rights in the country. Uh, and really our initiative is to bring those collections uh, to a, a really uh, mass audience, um, both for New Yorkers and online ac around the world. Um, we're really, really pleased to have you all with us this evening. Um, I'm gonna introduce you one by one. Josh Seafried is currently an active duty Air Force officer and 2009 graduate of the Air Force Academy and operated under the pseudonym J.D. Smith prior to the repeal. As co-founder and co-director of OutServe, he reg is regularly sought by the media to represent gay active duty members and has only appeared in shadow to date. Seaford was an invited guest to the presidential signing of the legislation to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Jonathan Mills is a staff sergeant and electron electronic technician for the U.S. Air Force, currently stationed in Washington, D.C. He is the first executive editor of OutServe magazine. Catherine Miller was a cadet at West Point until she resigned in protest of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. She worked as one of OutServe's main spokespersons during the fight to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell, appearing on national television and escorting Lady Gaga at MTV's Music Video Awards. She is currently studying at Yale and serves on OutServe's board of directors. Danny Hernandez was a Lance Corporal in the U.S. Marine Corps. Since his separation from the Marines, he has been a staff member at Service Members Legal Defense Network, where he has worked for the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Sewell Chan is deputy op-ed editor at the New York Times. He was previously a Washington economic correspondent for the newspaper and, and the founding bureau chief of the City Room News blog and a metropolitan reporter covering transportation in City Hall. Thank you all for being with us, and I look forward to hearing you. Thanks. Thank you all for coming tonight on a rainy night. Um, it's possible to have a great discussion, in fact, often better discussions with a small crowd than with a large one. <coughs> and the panel tonight is being recorded as well so that others can watch this after us. Um, I was, when I was asked to serve on this panel, I thought this is an amazing honor, I've gotta be there. And I read through this book in one sitting. Um, the stories of courage and sacrifice um, and integrity that are in this book will really, really move you. And what especially impressed me before we get to the panel was um, how diverse the stories were. Um, if you think that there was one experience of being GLBT in the military, there isn't. Um, this book was filled with people who've started, you know, from people through ROTC or people who went to uh, become commissioned officers after college to people who enlisted, people who'd served for decades, people who were still closeted, people who'd been outed, who'd been blackmailed who'd come out, who'd been discharged. It's, a, it's an incredible uh, resource that I hope you all will read if you haven't already. Um, so we're actually gonna start by just having a few minutes of personal stories from each of the panel members, and then I'm gonna ask a bunch of questions, uh, and then uh, when, when we're ready, we'll move to audience Q&A and hopefully have a pretty rich and engaged discussion. So who's gonna start? Should we start from the far end? and Sure. This way? Um, my name is Josh Seafried. I'm a first lieutenant in the United States Air Force. I'm currently stationed at McGuire Air Force Base, uh, just about two hours south of here. Uh, I'm a, a cost analyst and a financial management person for the Air Force. Um, my experience with Don't Ask, Don't Tell is uh, very interesting. I graduated from the Air Force Academy in 2009, and shortly after I went to my training and was blackmailed by my instructor there, uh, changing my test scores, uh, harassing me constantly, and um, with the help of Service Members Legal Defense Network, I uh, turned in my instructor, and uh, that instructor ended up turning around and outing me. Um, I was removed from my job. Um, they took away my, my ability to access computers. I was actually working at the chaplain's office um, during this time, and um, Secretary Gates then uh, came out with this new policy that third-party outings weren't allowed anymore, and that kind of stopped the process against me personally. But kind of during this process, I got so frustrated uh, with don't ask, don't tell, that I decided to, to turn around and help create OutServe um, and kind of build a network where we could start to network together and then kind of collectively voice our concerns to the military and to, and to the public. And um, uh, a lot of the people that contributed in the book are, are OutServe members. And what we did was just using hidden social media, we started just to connect gay soldiers around the world. Uh, and, to date, and to this date right now, we have over 4,700 
uh, uh, members across the globe that are connected, that, that have the support, that are no longer alone, um, that are able to meet on a regular basis and just have that support right now, even post uh, the don't ask, don't tell error. But um, one, I guess the two big reasons I, I, I agreed to do this project was, I think it was really important to uh, you know, give the courage that there are gay people in the military right now. I remember reading a book when I was at the Air Force Academy that of a, of a gay service member and just getting courage from that. And so I hoped by putting up these stories, um, other people that pick it up and other service members that are thinking about serving or are serving, realize that there's so many of us out there to, you know, that are gay and it's okay. And, and second of all, to actually just change the mind. Um, when I gave this book to someone at my, uh, my base, um, he was a person that was very against the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Um, a day later, he came back to me, and uh, this, this man's over 50, and he, and he was crying. He's like, I really had no idea that the kind of effect that people actually went through under Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So I guess that was the two, kind of, two goals in, in, in doing this project, and I think it was a huge success. I'm Staff Sergeant Jonathan Mills. I'm stationed in Washington, D.C. I do a satellite communication for the Air Force. Um, my first experience with Don't Ask, Don't Tell came uh, during my divorce. I grew up in a very uh, conservative uh, religious household. And um, through um, a variety of circumstances when I was younger, uh, me and my then high school sweetheart uh, made a decision to uh, get married. Um, Later on in my Air Force career, about three years into my Air Force career, um, I had come through a process of personal growth, as had she. And when it came down to the crucial moment of you know, having that discussion that should have happened several years ago, um, that is when Don't Ask, Don't Tell really started to have an, um, an obvious impact in my life. And that came about because within the military, uh, we have a very tight-knit uh, community. Um, every, all of our peers are very close, supervisors are very involved in their subordinates. Um, social lives and their personal lives, it's uh, really uh, one big family. Um, so when a situation like this comes up, um, and with regard to me, my divorce, it was very hard to go and talk to anybody about that uh, at the time because there was really nobody you could turn to for emotional support, um, for uh, any other uh, support that was needed during a divorce um, because you couldn't, you know, release the particulars. Um, so the story that I wrote in uh, our time was uh, an account of me actually coming out to my supervisor um, about my divorce. Um, my supervisor was very involved in my life um, and, you know, I tried to be as vague as possible but he got out of me and that was, that was the moment where I felt like everything that I had worked for so far was just going to be um, down the tube in that instant. And it wasn't, and the reason it wasn't is that my supervisor um, was a man of integrity. Uh, he understood what it meant um, to be able to serve, uh, to be able to serve with courage and with integrity. He understood what that real meaning of that word was, just as Admiral Mullen stated during his testimony. Um, so that was my first experience with uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Um, going through that and then meeting uh, Josh and learning about OutServe inspired me be more involved in the organization. Um, they asked for initiatives uh, to help you know, reach out in our network a little bit more. Um, and we came up with the idea to do OutServe Magazine, uh, which has been more successful than I thought it would be. Um, we're growing in readership, which is great. And most importantly, we're getting the word out about um, our organization, about the policies that affect us. And um, what I feel is most important is sharing our stories, like the stories that are in Josh's book, Our Time with the world through the magazine. Uh, so I'm Katie Miller. I was a West Point cadet until August 2010 uh, before I came out to my commanding officers and was subsequently uh, discharged from the military. I, uh, unlike um, Jonathan Mills, for example, I, I knew I was gay before entering the academy in 2008. Um, but honestly, I just didn't think that, you know, that, that being gay had anything to do um, would have any impact on my, my ability to serve or my willingness to serve. And when I got to West Point, I realized that just wasn't the case. Um, it wasn't a don't ask, don't tell policy. It was, uh, you know, people may ask and I'm gonna have to do my best to hide it. Um, I'm gonna have to 
come up with some sort of strategy. Um, you know, I, I fabricated a heterosexual dating history.